Hello everyone, DSO here from DadStartingOver.com and before we get started with today's episode I wanted to get a couple of pieces of business out of the way. Number one, I sell books. You can find my books at DadStartingOver.com slash books. The books include my bestseller, The Dead Bedroom Fix. My second book is called Now What? A Guide for Men Starting Over in Life After Infidelity, Breakup, and Divorce. And my third and final book is called Red Flags. You can buy these all directly from my website and download directly from my website, or you can go to any of the major retailers. Second piece of business is that I have a members-only part of my website called the DSO Fraternity. With the DSO Fraternity, you have access to all of my books in PDF and audio format. You also get access to members-only articles and audio, and you are free to discuss those articles with fellow members on the website. And we also have DSO Fraternity live meetings via Zoom. In these live meetings, you are free to share your story and listen to advice from others. And on occasion, we will have a special guest, such as author Dr. Robert Glover of No More Mr. Nice Guy. So please check out the DSO Fraternity at dadstartingover.com slash join. Thank you so much. And on to the episode. So Russell, you are 37 years of age and the father of two girls five and three so two girls Oof, uh, my sympathies and <laughs> and your wife she's going to be the big four zero coming up soon here at the end of the year and you yes. guys have been married for seven years so right off the bat i see two things the big four zero that's a huge turning point for a lot of women mm-hmm. so I'm at a very hard time coping with that and then the very stereotypical seven-year itch so let's just kind of set those aside for now um I'm going to go through, I always ask, this is for the listener's benefit, but I always ask everybody that I talk to, send me an email overview of your situation so that I can kind of hit the ground running and talking and we get the most out of our hour. Some guys send like eight, nine pages worth of stuff and it takes me a long time to go through it. You have a very nice bullet point list. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to read through this and we'll stop at certain points so we can discuss, excuse me. So you met through church. Um, Yes. You dated for a few months, and here's where I think the tone kind of changes here, and I think this is interesting. I think you were, you'll see where I'm getting at with this. You dated for a few months, and she asked you to move in with her. So I think yes. that's interesting. Um, you lived together for a whole year, and then she proposed that you guys pick up and go out of state. Correct. Um, her thought was, your work is in that state, or I assume close to that state, so it makes more sense for you guys to go there so you don't have to travel all the time. Yeah, that was her uh, her excuse, but I believe she just wanted to get a little bit further away from my family. That was nice. I'm, I'm, we're we're very very family oriented, um, my my side of the family, and uh, I think that was part of the reason. I mean, it may have been part of the reason for the for the be closer to work as well. Um, was she pretty but, ov- was she pretty overt in her disdain for the family, or she didn't like the fact that you were around them often, or what yeah, was no. The- she was, uh, no, she was open about it. She said that, you know, uh, she felt that I spent, you know, a lot of time with the family and she wanted, uh, us to focus on our family that we were trying to build. Um, uh, but we weren't even married yet. We were still dating and, uh, you know, we didn't have any kids. So it was, um, she, I guess she just wanted more of my attention. Um, okay. well, that's, she, she, I think, I think that's hugely important right there. And that's one mm-hmm. of those things. Let's put that up on the shelf too. So <laughs> She had some issues about she doesn't like you getting pulled away from her. Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah, and so you guys moved to this other state, and she has a hard time finding work, and so she decides, you know what? I, do I really need to work? Because you make enough money. Why don't I just be a stay-at-home, soon-to-be future mom, right? Yes. And you were cool with that at the time? Were you kind of at weird the, about it? At the, time, at the time, I was fine with it. I had no uh, <laughs> issues with it whatsoever. Um, you know, we didn't have two kids and a bunch. We didn't have many bills, so everything was great. So she's, uh, so she's home alone, and you guys are doing this scenario for about a year. Correct. Prior to, let me go here. I lost my place here. Um, you're doing, uh, <laughs> and then she, oh, it says you decided to get married after about a year in this other state. But then you put a parenthesis here that, well, actually, she was the one to relentlessly push towards this marriage. Yes. Interesting. It, 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 if you can tell from some of, you know, uh, how I worded some of the stuff, I, you know, I, I still kind of hold a little bit of resentments. I'm trying to get rid of that. And we, we've been trying to talk through it. But yes, I, I held resentments for 
um, mm -hmm. for her, you know, kind of rushing me to move in with her, for her kind of uh, yeah. Yeah. making us move out of state, for her kind of rushing me to marry her. Mm -hmm. All those things, you know, kind of built up a little bit, a little resentment in, inside of me because I wasn't sure. ready. Sure. Um, so you got married. You tried for about a year to have a baby. Finally, success. This was in 2015. And then pretty short two years later, you had kid number two. Yes. And, that, and that's when you think the wheels started to come off a little bit. She was being overwhelmed yeah. having two kids. Yes. And on top of that, having two kids, which is tough enough as it is, her father died the year before the second kid was born. And then yes. her mother died a couple of years after kid number two was born. So she's just got this perfect storm of stuff going on. Correct. Uh, what was her relationship to mom and dad? Um, you know, different, different than, uh, my family's relationship we're hugging kissing you know love you all the time type family they're more of a gifts and service kind of family they don't hug they don't say i love you mm -hmm. but they show they show their love in different ways um so she was adopted her uh her and her sister were both adopted but they're you know to me it's weird because i grew up differently you know I, I grew up hugging and kissing and uh very affectionate showing love and and touch and and she, her family's different. So, um, but you know, I, who am I to say that, that their love was, uh, any less than the love between me and my mom, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of a different form that they, they show it differently. So, so but the, their relationship was good though. Um, it was, it was, I think it was good. I don't think there was anything harmful about it or negative or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, correct. with her being so averse to, you spending so much time with your family. Did she have a lot of time with her family? No, they were, were in West Virginia and we're in uh, South Carolina, Georgia. So we only saw them a few times a year. Okay. So, and she was okay with keeping them at a safe distance. Yes. Sounds like kind of a, for lack of a better term, a little bit of a cold relationship compared to your very warm family dynamic there. That's um, how I, that's how I feel. But you know, like I said, who am I to judge? Yeah, exactly. So, um, going along here. Da, 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 da. So she, uh, you went in for an interview, job related interview, and you came home one day and this is where things start to get a little squirrely. And she's like, I got some papers here. I need you to sign. And you're like, sure. And you look them over and you realize that the papers are legal documents that show the inheritance that she received from mom dying would go directly to the kids and not to you. Correct. To which you understandably go, oh, that's kind of weird. What's that about? And to her answer to that was what? She wanted a divorce. Wah, wah, wah. So. Yeah. And as far as you're concerned, that just came out. <laughs> of Correct. Yeah. I was not expecting it. Um, I mean, I knew we had some issues and, you know, I, I wanted to go to marriage counseling and things weren't perfect, but I, I had no idea they were that she was at that point. Well, tell um, me, what, what were the things that made you say, hey, maybe we should get some counseling? Uh, just the arguing, um, you know, arguing in front of the kids, um, uh, the character assassination. I mean, it, we could get pretty nasty, but, you know, um, I still, I guess because it was a slow progression, um, you know, from when we started dating and got married to, to this, this point, I, uh, it, it, you know how you like you're gaining weight or whatever and you don't notice it but you see somebody you hadn't seen in six months and they're like oh man you know uh <laughs> it's 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 kind of the same thing we didn't i didn't really notice it because it had been a slow progression and mm -hmm. getting worse and worse and um and you know after talking to family members they're like yeah you guys were horrible oh yeah and uh, yeah and um so <laughs> they saw it but you know it was hard I for me to see oh, and absolutely. um I can relate completely to this, not to cut you off there, but um, yeah. in my first marriage, it was, man, I was totally just taken off guard by my wife having the affair and asking for the divorce. But then uh -huh. once the fog of that pretty acute emotional trauma left me, I was left with, well, yeah, I mean, we had that issue and that other issue. And we did have that pretty nasty fight those 100 times. And yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty bad there for a while. And it progressively got worse. But you're right, you get caught up in like this, the machine of the family and marriage, and must take care of kids must go to work must pay bills. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And just all that stuff is just like noise in the background. And you kind of learn to ignore it and move on and sweep it under the rug. And, and we'll deal with that at some point. And, and you obviously said, yeah, I think we need to pull this out from under the rug and get some counseling. So you saw it was enough to go yeah we got some issues here yeah and uh you know i i, I moved out for 
10 months. And in, in that time I had, was able to do a lot of reflection and, and, uh, what was and the, I was, I'm sorry, ahead, what, sorry. What was the, what was the, uh, thought behind you taking off and not wife, her being the one to, you know, since she was the one to say, I want a divorce. Is that a lot of guys yeah. would say, well then fine leave. But you said, no, nah, I'll take off. Is that because she's jobless and the kids and everything else? No, no. What had happened was, uh, you know, she wanted the divorce and I was by, beside myself the whole day. I was, I was just a wreck. You know, I wasn't expecting it. I was crying. I was, uh, in bad shape. And then, you know, I'm like, I finally came to terms with it by the end of the day. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start looking for a place, this and that. Um, and then I got out of the shower that night and she was on the bed crying. And, and she said, you know, I, I, I think, I, I, you know, I think this may be wrong. I said, you know, she said, uh, I'm, I don't think she said I made a mistake because she, I've never heard her say I made a mistake or I'm sorry, <laughs> but, uh, but she, she was crying and stuff and, and maybe, you know, she said kind of basically came across that she didn't want that. She didn't want a divorce that, you know, um, she's like, I want to try and make this work. I'm like, all right, all right, you know, let, fine, let's, let's do this. And totally had to change my mindset back to, okay, we're going to try and make this work. We're going to go to counseling, all this. Anyway, two days later, so we're in the mindset, okay, we're going to try and make this work. Two days later, I get home from work. We're on the couch. We're talking and something happened. And she said, you know, you haven't changed at all. And this had been two days since she said she wanted a divorce yeah, yeah. and then said, you know, we're going to try and make this work. And um, she said, you haven't changed at all. I'm like, what? You know, like, um, it's been two days, I, you know, anyway. So then she said she wanted a divorce again. Mm -hmm. And you've done that a this, few times, the back and forth has happened a few times. This happened three times, three times. Yeah. She told me yeah. she wanted a divorce and three times she said, you know, no, maybe we should try and make it work. That's when I, I made the decision, you know, I'm going to move out for a little bit. I'm going to move out, you know, we're going to have some space and, and, and go to marriage counseling and, and, you know, maybe this will help. I think it, I don't know if it was the right decision for me to move out, but anyway, I did, we went to marriage counseling for s about six months, something like that. And, um, we did a bunch of sessions and had a lot of good stuff happen, but it just felt like we kept moving even further and further apart. And, um, and like I said, that might, might've been cause I moved out of the house, um, had my, got my own place, but, it wasn't helping. Nothing was getting better. And um, I felt like she was, you know, on the verge of just saying, screw it. So I um, met somebody and, well, you let know, me stop you there. How'd you meet this? Go, go ahead. Um, it, you know, I'm the one I went out and reached out on Tinder. I, you know, oh, I figured yes. our, I think I figured my marriage was done and, um, and it, it was, that was it. And uh, I'd been living by myself for six months and um, nothing was getting better. It was getting worse. And so I was, I was actually going to go get, you know, a lawyer and, and go ahead and finalize, you know, get, get the ball rolling. Um, but uh, so anyway, I met somebody on Tinder and we had relations. And then I came home from work one day and I had the uh, uh, papers on my door that I need to go to the sheriff's office or whatever. And, or they tried to come by and give me papers. So oh, I went to the sheriff's office. Yeah, I went to the sheriff's office and she had filed for divorce. Mm -hmm. So that's when I cut relations to uh, the girl I was with. Um, I'd, only, I'd only been seeing her for a couple months, but I cut all relations because uh, my lawyer told me to. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my lawyer told me to, you know, Smart. Uh, get rid of her. Just, you know, mm -hmm. from here on out, just be on the straight and narrow because it's all going to come out in court. Anyway, yep. went through two months of it. Well, almost two months. We were a couple of days before the temporary hearing and, um, and she called everything off. She, uh, she said she wanted to, you know, had a epiphany or something and um, had a change of heart and, you know, wanted to make it work. So I, I didn't believe her. Of course I, uh, mm -hmm. you know, had to meet with her a couple of times and she, honestly, she seemed like a different person. Like something had happened, a change inside of her. I, I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. She says it was the Holy spirit. I, I don't know, but she seemed like a different person. And, um, I said, you know what? I, I believe for the kids, for us, it's worth one more shot, mm -hmm. one more shot. And, um, and, and how long ago was that? This was about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, maybe, maybe like six weeks. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, I've moved since then I've, I've moved back in. We both dropped our charges, our claims towards each other. 
I've moved back in and um, it's, it's been different, man. It's been real, like real awesome in some aspects and, you know, still hasn't changed in some aspects and, and uh, we can at least identify those, those areas. And, and uh, we agree that we need to work on them and, and we're going to go back to counseling again. You know, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm, you know, reaching out to you. I'm, I'm reading all these self-help books and all this different stuff uh, about relationships and marriage. And um, what's she doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, does I, you're not getting, there's no, there's no uh, obvious work on her part. She's not involving she's, you in anything. Uh, no, she's, she definitely is willing though. Like, I, you know, she'll take your she, lead. If you say we're going next Wednesday to see his counselor, she's like, okay, that's fine. Correct. Yeah. She'll, she's okay. been kind of following my lead. Um, you know, I'd like for her to kind of do, okay. re, you know, look into getting her, you know, uh, uh, her own self-help, whatever, but I'm not pushing anything on her. Um, I'm trying to take care of myself, you know, cause I know I'm a huge, I'm a huge part of the problem. It's not just her. Well, you're a couple, um, so obviously, yeah, yeah. You're at least fifty percent of it. Okay, so and let me stop you there. Okay, because reading over your story, there's about a while. Your first of all, while your story is common, I mean, uh, I could just take your 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 bullet point bullet point list that you sent me here and just drop it into so many other emails that I get. It's just mm-hmm. it's the same thing again and again and again. And and this uh, this that takes you down a whole other road. Is this some kind of modern day phenomenon that we're seeing here? What's going on? But that's a whole other story. But for mm-hmm. you. I think there are a bunch of different roads we go down, but there's two main ones. And I want to start with number one, which is there's an overall theme here, which, and I am going to pick on you a little bit, which is, which is passivity Mm -hmm. that you're pretty passive in things. Would you say that's fair? I am actually in all this reading I've been doing, I'm kind of thinking that I might might be, might be passive aggressive uh, disorder. I might have a bit of that. So yes, I would say that's fair. And the reason I say that is, uh, we dated for a few months. She asked me to move in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lived together for a year. She says, we got to move to this other state. Um, she has a t- hard time finding work. She says, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. Holy crap, this woman has been in the uh, the driver's seat for the entirety of this relationship from day one, it seems. At least from my yes. outside perspective and for information you're giving me. I'm, that's the first thing that stuck out is, man, this guy's just been yes dearing it from you know day one. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. And yes. She would probably, ironically, even though she's the one that's like, give me the controls. I'm taking them from now on. She'll probably be the first to tell you, I just wish every now and then he would have told me no. Yes. Um, so that's, that's one side. The other side is, where the hell did this, I want to get a divorce suddenly come from? Now, mm-hmm. I am the first to admit, that I, I have a prejudice. And my prejudice is that what happened to me personally and then because yes. of what happened to me personally and because of my writing, I attract a slew of other men who have been through the same thing. But mm-hmm. with that being said, with that prejudice being said, I also think there's another way of looking at it is that's given me a hint of wisdom that I otherwise didn't have. There's some knowledge there. And one mm-hmm. is that your wife is very much acting like a woman who had her buttons pushed by somebody else. Um, she was previously married. I don't, I don't know if I put that in there. I'm sorry, one more time. She was previously married. I don't know if I put that in there, but is there a contact with the ex-husband? Is that why you bring that up or no, 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 no. As you just said, she had her buttons pushed before. I don't know. Uh, I, I oh, forget I mean, what I, what, I, I what forgot I'm what I is, What I'm getting at is at least some kind of emotional affair going on here. Okay. Uh, that is, if I were a betting man, I'd, I'd put all the money on that. Um, okay. Now it doesn't mean she ran off and she's screwing some other guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm telling you, it could be as innocuous as she's on Facebook one day because she's bored and all of a sudden a thing comes up and it's some ex-boyfriend from 20 years ago. Yeah. And he says, I just saw your picture and I thought, man, she hasn't changed a bit. How are you doing? And she says, I got Mm -hmm. the kids. I got this. Everything's great. How are you? And he's like, yeah, I got a wife and kids too. And he goes, man, we've had, we had some great, we had some great times back then, didn't we? It was so great to see you. I just wanted to say hi. I'm so glad that you're happy. I miss seeing you, blah, blah, blah. Let's stay in touch. That's it, mm-hmm. right? Sounds innocent. Sounds wonderful. Um, but for some women, in some cases, with some, given their background, given their current, whatever, whatever's going on, that's enough to just get the head spinning and mm-hmm. get the train rolling. 
and this the the train rolls down the tracks and it gets faster and faster and the next thing you know the poor innocent husband comes home and the wife goes i don't know if i'm happy or if i've ever been happy i'm having very serious doubts about a relationship Mm -hmm. um that's probably some flavor of that has happened here have you had any indication any signals that that's what's going on at all uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a possibility. I know that there for the last six months, um, like she was a little standoffish and, you know, she wouldn't give me the uh, password to her phone and uh, well, stuff, like, okay. so, stuff like that. And I'm like, <laughs> say no more. Okay. So she, she has another man on the side and probably what happened here, I'm going to sound like a know-it-all here, but again, been doing this for years, hundreds of guys I've talked to well, thousands and she probably was having at least in what we call an emotional relationship, which means they never touched each other, but they were over the phone talking to each other and it grew and grew. And she's like, you know, I think I'd rather pursue this than stay in this relationship. And mm-hmm. then over the months of doing that six months, whatever the timeline is, you said um, it stopped and that relationship was no more. Maybe the guy said, see you later. And so mm-hmm. she's like, shit, now I'm on my own. And now what, what the hell did I just do? This was really stupid. I need to go back to my husband. That's probably what you're seeing here, which I guess you have to have a real come to Jesus moment with yourself. Is that something you're cool with? Uh, some men I've talked to say, you know, we're all human. Um, she's an overstressed mom. Um, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's susceptible to this kind of thing. As long as they didn't have physical intimacy, as long as they didn't do whatever your boundary is, then I'm cool with it. We can move on as couples and work through this. Um, You need to define that, what that boundary is for yourself. Uh, The negative is that she's done this once already, probably. I don't know. But again, if I were a betting man, that's what I put my money on. Um, Since she probably has done this, whatever this is, emotional or physical intimacy with another man. Um, the chances of her doing it again are pretty damn high, unfortunately. So you're going to be have, have to be Mr. On, on guard. Um, and you're going to have to really lay down some boundaries and some limitations. And you're really going to have to ditch this passive role that you've been doing all these years and take the reins and say, this is how it's going to be from now on. Oh, yeah. Uh, which means... What was that? You have a password on your phone? Well, then you will give me this password right now or else I go talk to the attorney and I'm being very serious because we, mm-hmm. don't, we don't hide things from each other. We're a couple. I love you. Yes. I don't care. Here's my phone if you want to look through it. I have nothing to hide. Why, why are you acting so weird? So that's mm-hmm. enough. Um, no, you're not going to talk to that, that man. Why would you want to do that? That's very inconsiderate and that's not proper behavior for a wife. That's a boundary. Uh, no, you're not going to go out eight weekends in a row with your girlfriends and go out partying and drinking, whatever it may be. So you got to define for you what those are and learn to enforce them. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess my question to you is, which is a tough one. Let's play pretend worst case scenario within the next month, two months, excuse me, you start getting a little suspicious. Your gut's telling you I'm still, there's still something not quite right here. And if you're like a lot of guys that I talk to, you start, you turn into Mr. Private Investigator and you start Googling like how to hack phones, put recorders in cars. I mean, I've heard it all. <laughs> and, and you discover the worst of the worst that, oh sh- shit, she's been not only talking to some guy, but they've had a physical relationship for several months and then they broke up and now they're talking about getting back together again. Mm-hmm. What does that mean for you? Is that, is that a total game stop? We're done over a thing for you? Uh, after everything we've been through, yes, that would be uh, that would be yeah. a, that's that's it. So let's walk the line back then. So that's the ultimate. Well, uh, probably ninety nine percent of the guys would say the same thing you just said. Well, yeah, duh. Of course I'd leave. Okay, let's walk yeah. it back a little bit. No physical intimacy whatsoever. They were just talking over Facebook. Some flirtation. Maybe she sent a picture or two of herself. He says you're beautiful. I miss you. Blah 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 blah. Is that a defining? That's, that's not a, that's not a deal breaker um, for me, but it, it, it is a very, very big slap in the face and like a, Hey, you know, this, this cannot happen. This is not okay. This is not cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But, uh, and I, and I have been planning on, you know, we've, we've only been back together six weeks now. So like I said, I've been reading all this self-help stuff and, and yes, I've been finding out that I am passive aggressive and that there's a lot of shit I need to change about myself. And, um, but, uh, 
So, so that would not necessarily be a deal breaker. But yes, she was sleeping with somebody, and I found out. Yes, after what we've been through. Now, if it had happened when we were apart, I was doing the same thing. So, I cannot, um, I can't say that'd be a deal breaker if it happened. You know, if I found out it happened while we were living apart. One common scenario is that she was having an emotional affair prior to your breakup, prior mm-hmm. to you leaving, and then mm-hmm. once you're out, she feels, uh, what's the word, absolved. She no longer has any guilt. Res- in doing the next step so she you know yeah. she texts the guy and says guess what he just left and he's like i'll be right over and yeah. then they had a sexual relationship for several months and then it, it fizzled out it it was done which they normally are pretty quickly these affairs and then uh, she wants to go back in your arms okay that's the yeah. scenario are you cool with that i mean it, that's possible I, I haven't thought of that um you know i was thinking along the lines of she got a big inheritance. She didn't need me anymore. She was unhappy. Uh, I moved out and didn't give her that much money while I was living away. And uh, she blew through her inheritance and then needed me back for the money. Could that's, that's, that's what I've been thinking. Could now there could, well have, be. could be, could be there, that there could, there could have been an affair or there could have been another man involved. I, I, I never saw any signs of it. I never, um, you know, never caught her anything of it. I, but it's possible. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying, like, you, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier on, you're, you are hitting kind of a perfect storm of issues here, which is the, uh, her age. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, that hits uh, us. Men really don't have a, a, a good appreciation for how much that hits a lot of women. Not every woman, mm-hmm. of course, but for a lot of women hitting these age milestones, the big three zero is holy crap. I haven't, I don't have a family yet. This is nuts. I'm, I'm losing yeah. my mind here. I need to grab a yeah. guy real quick. And a lot of women in, in those scenarios make bad decisions as far as what guy they grab. They, they grab <laughs> Mr. Re, they grab Mr. Reliable, Mr. Provider man. And then several years into it, they go, I just, what, what did I do this? I have no feelings for this guy. He, he's, he's a great guy. <laughs> He'd be a great friend, but there's nothing, there's no oomph there. And that's where we see a lot of guys I talk to. They several years, a couple of kids later, they have the divorce and the wife tells, I, I've never really felt anything. I'm going to go for this loser over here. Um, mm-hmm. But it, have you, in looking back at your relationship, do you feel that you've been kind of a pawn in her little life game or you missed her provider, you played a role and now your role is done type of thing? Um, you know, a little bit. I, I felt that way. Yeah, before um, a little bit. Has she displayed, there's a term that's going around right now in the world of relationship talks with men. If you're on my Facebook groups, it's brought up a lot, which is narcissism. Um, mm-hmm. My wife's a narcissist. You hear it again and again. And that is actually a yeah. clinical term, narcissistic personality disorder. It's a, what they call a cluster, oh, yeah. part of the cluster B personality disorders, along with uh, borderline personality, which is pretty common and uh, histrionic personality. So they're all basically at some point in their childhood development, something got flipped in the wrong way and they act out yep. later on in life. Did you ever see anything along those lines in her or something that kind of made your ears perk up to say, uh oh, this is no good. Well yeah, um here in the you know the past uh three months I've been doing all this reading online, all this self help stuff and I've been reading about narcissism, uh mm-hmm. uh past passive aggressive disorder, um borderline personality disorder, all that stuff. And um I'm I'm tending to believe that I'm uh, passive aggressive and uh, she is a bit of a narcissist. And um, can, you I haven't said that. Other, can you point out some other things that make her narcissistic? Um, I, <laughs> just off the top of my head. I mean, I, I got a lot of stuff going through there right now. I can't really, um, <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I'd wrote down some notes for this or something. That would have been great. But uh, no, I mean, this is just here recently. I've been reading up on it and I'm saying, Oh, she show, she shows that sign. Oh, she kind of acts like that. Or, Ooh, you know, but I also show some signs of narcissism, uh, more so the passive aggressive, uh, side, but, and she also so shows some signs of passive aggressive, but more so on the narcissist side. Wow. And I haven't, told, I haven't told her that of course. Now, I, uh, we have meet, we have, um, our first appointments as a couple for couples therapy and we both have individual appointments for therapy, all that scheduled and coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I'll, of course I'll talk about that with the counselor and everything, but I, I haven't told her hell no. Mm-hmm. Are you, <laughs> are you going to take the step of uh, bringing up the topic of a possible affair emotional or otherwise, and see if there's anything going on there with, with the caveat that 
even if there was, she probably deny. But hey, you never know. She may come out and say, yeah, there was a little something. Yeah, this time around, uh, DSO, I feel, you know, a lot more confident to to talk about stuff like that's yeah. what i said you know when i when i told you uh how it is now it's uh it's very different it's uh you know like i have a, a new confidence about me Good. um and uh she is is more open like we uh the first um week i was back in the house uh we had a heart to heart and we're, she was crying and you know she opened up to me about some childhood trauma she had experienced and and uh can you go on with uh yeah, yeah, with um uh a family member had uh uh touched her, you know, physically abused her. Well, mm-hmm. not physically abused, but molested. There we go. Okay. That's a better word. Had uh, molested her when she was was a kid. And um I mean, we had been <laughs> married 7 years. I'd never heard this. You know, this was like a mind blower for me. I'm like I felt so good that she'd opened up to me and and confided in me and you know, and I, there are some things that I had never told her that I told her too. And it was, it was very good. Um, afterwards, uh, you know, I just felt closer to her. And, um, so no, I mean, the, I have no problem, you know, talking to her about anything, uh, now. And I, I have no problem bringing up, you know, asking about an affair. She might, you know, be upset, but no, I'm, I feel like I can say anything now in our relationship and not, not feel, you know, shame for it or whatever. Where so, do you where do you feel about taking on more of the leadership role? Does that fill you with some dread? Is that no. stressful to you? Not at all. And I, I've been slowly doing that. Um, I, I like to believe I've been slowly doing that. And now that I've, you know, kind of come to terms with the fact that I think I have passive aggressive disorder, I've been trying to work on that a little more. Um, what is it that you feel is the the genesis of your passivity? What does that mean? The genesis. The genesis. How did all, how, where did that come from? Oh, okay. Um, honestly, I, I think it's because I never had a father role model in my life. Uh, um, yeah. I think I think that's part of it. That's I think there's more that goes into it than just that. But I grew up in uh, a house of women. My two sisters and my mom, and mm-hmm. never. My dad died when I was young. They got divorced. I was uh, six when they got divorced, and then about 10 when he died, but we never saw him. We saw him three times a year because we lived across the country. Uh, we lived in Vermont and he was down here. So we only saw him a couple times a year. And um, I, I never had anybody to teach me how to be a man. Um, and, and that I'm still kind of bitter, you know, for that, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. And, you know, my mom, my mom did great for a single mother with three kids on trying to help me be a man, but you know, yeah. she, she can only do so much as a woman, you know? And, um, well, I think know, that's part. Go ahead. Well, uh, you're in the majority in that. So the majority of you guys I talk to all say the same thing. Either there was okay. a divorce and dad moved away and started up a new family with another wife or dad passed away. So, you know, it's, it's easy for me being the man here and a man oriented podcast and books and so forth to say, you know, how important the man is and the dad and the relationship, but there really is something to it, isn't there? there there's something about that paternal figure it's the yin and the yang the the maternal and paternal working together to raise the more well-rounded kid and when one of those components is gone and we see that especially when that dad figure is gone things just go off the rails pretty quick and uh, you know there's really alarming statistics about when we look at violent offenders in prison what what percentage of them were fatherless and it's like something astronomical like 90 some percent of them it's like wow Uh that can't be a coincidence um, mm-hmm. divorced people that were divorced. Well, you look back, did the guy, the guy that's in a divorced, that, that divorced his wife, did he come from a broken home? Yeah. So many, you know, very high percentage there. So it's something that has its, uh, once it has its, his, its hooks in you, it kind of expands and, and permeates throughout your relationships for the rest of your life. And, um, so that's what you're saying, but you are to your credit above most that you recognize I got some issues here and I think a big part of it may be due to the fact that dad wasn't around when I was a kid and mom, God love her. She can't do it all herself and she doesn't know what it's like to be a man. So she doesn't have that perspective and she just didn't have the tools in her toolbox and that's nothing wrong with that. I mean, she did the best she could. I'm sure she's a wonderful woman, but um, it ain't your fault. Ain't her fault that uh, dad took off and 
did what he did and, and then he passed away. And I'm sorry to hear that, but especially at, at such an, an age, 10 years old, it's like the textbook pre pubertal. You're, yeah. really, you're really in that growth stage. You hope bad things don't happen. But um, for a lot of um, guys that I talk to with women, wives, like your wife, doing what she did, I'll ask them about what happened in their life and so forth. And a lot of them will say, well, around age nine, around age 10, 11, right before puberty hit, this awful thing. So I hear it again and again and again. How old was she? Do you know when uh, the molestation occurred? Uh, I do not know. No. Um, Just I'm, I'm guessing uh, teens, you know, tweens, yeah. like uh, 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there, 13. Um, she wasn't. She, for girls. Yeah. yeah. It was before high school. She hadn't been in high school, by, the, by yeah. the way she was talking. But I don't know exactly what age now. And that has huge effects on a person's psyche for the rest of their lives. I mean, that's traumatic abuse on her part. And if, <laughs> and if you don't get help with it, recognize it like, whoa, this, this shit happened to me when I was younger. I better get on top of this or else this is going to affect. If you don't have that level of introspection and it, you know, the willingness to get help, it will have effects. And for a lot of these women it seems like they just try to reintroduce that chaos in their life at just the most inopportune times. And the guy's like, everything's going wonderful. We just had a baby. Everything's great. I got a promotion at work. And then suddenly she runs off with this bartender that she met the other Friday. It's like, I, I don't get what happened. And then you drill down into it. Well, tell me about her childhood. Oh, mom was an alcoholic. Dad ran off. There was cheating. There was molestation. You're like, well, she's just, did she ever get help with that? Nine times out of 10, the answer is, oh, no, she's, she's above that. She'll never get help. She says there's yeah. nothing, she's nothing wrong with her. She's, she's in control. She's, no one can tell her anything's wrong. And if they do, you know, she'll rain hell down on you. But um, mm -hmm. uh, invariably, something comes out with that. So, like I say, there's so many different roads to go down with a situation like yours. But I'm glad to hear that you're of the mindset of, we got a problem here. I'm willing to work through this, but it's got to be on these certain terms. And if we don't do that, um, you're willing to walk. And I think yeah. you did something that I don't recommend to guys, but what, what you did is the, the going out and sleeping with other women. Cause you did that pretty quickly, which, yeah. which shows that you have some social skills and some looks and so forth that make you a catch. Because I tell you what, there's a lot of guys out there that do what you did in Tinder and every online, everything, and they do that for years and nothing. I mean, less than nothing. But you went out in a matter of months and you hooked up with some woman and this guy said sex. So it's good for you, right? Um, but why do I not say men do that? Because invariably, you always end up connecting with a not so great person. Mm -hmm. And then you find out, wow, I'm with my wife all over again. This, <laughs> this is just uncanny how this happened. And yeah, because you're putting out an energy, so to speak, that attracts certain people and you overlook red flags and you're like, this feels amazing. And I haven't felt like this in years. And uh, mm -hmm. I would, I would assume, did you come about me through the dead bedroom fix book? Uh, yes, that was the, um, originally, I don't know if it was on Facebook or, or somewhere else, but yeah, it was the, uh, dead bedroom fix. And, um, this was right after, um, my wife wanted to get back together and, um, you know, I just kind of, in retrospect, remembered how our sex life was, you know, up until the, yeah. you know, she wanted a divorce. And it was, it was horrible. There was no, nothing there. Like, um, so I knew that, you know, that had, some of that had to do with me. So I'm like, you know what, I'll look into this. And that's when I, I went ahead and uh, bought the book and, and um, it went from there. That's, that's typically the, the gateway into my world is that book. Mm -hmm. But what's yeah, funny, you, it's, it's a book aimed at guys that are like, your relationship is great other than the fact that it, the sex is down and here's how I think you could fix that. But the majority of guys that come to that are like, uh, I read the book. It was fine, but here's the deal. My wife cheated on me. I'm in a divorce. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay. So I've learned that it's kind of the, it's the, it's the acute point of pain for a lot of guys, which is I'm not getting my physical needs met. And my wife isn't validating mm -hmm. me and I feel like shit. Yeah. And, and um, uh, then once you're in the door, then you realize, okay, it's, there's a lot more going on here than just no sex. It's just a symptom of a much bigger problem. Oh, dude, you open your book, open a can of worms to like <laughs> Good. what, what I'm realizing and things I'm looking into now and everything. So your, your book was the start of uh, this transformation that's happening. So uh, hopefully happening. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad to hear it. But the, the positive of uh, what you did and jumping out and meeting the other woman having sex is that uh, you realize if worst case scenario, this doesn't work out, I'll be more than okay. Yeah. I have yeah. the tools that it takes to attract other women and I can get my physical needs met. And I would assume that your physical connect, you don't have to go into detail, please don't. The physical connection with the, <laughs> the physical connection with the other woman was probably light years beyond what you've experienced over the last X number of years with the wife, right? Correct. You did things with her that you're like, I don't remember doing this in, since the honeymoon stage, if ever with the wife. And so yeah. what you're, what you, what you witnessed firsthand there was, man, there was nothing like that. What we call a new relationship energy where just the bodies take over the brains take over. And it's just your body's way of saying, mate with this person. This is amazing. Just keep doing it and doing it again until you make a baby. Thanks to modern technology. We don't have to make babies left and right. We can just enjoy the sex part of it. So, and that can go on for months, years, but there's always that inevitable drop off with seems like with every relationship, when you introduce the kids and some kind of stressor, somebody's parent dies, something's going on. And just the whole, the shine of the whole situation gets worn off a little bit and you realize you're back in the real world and the, that new relationship energy wears off. And that's where most people don't have the skills to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And that's where I wrote that book was like, you can keep it going. Maybe not to the point of the same intensity as what you had when you guys first started dating, but you can see glimpses of it again and again on a consistent basis. And here's what it takes. Now, the same thing is that uh, on the same note, when you hit those little stumbling blocks for a lot of people, especially people with some really negative baggage and they don't know how to cope. When you hit those stumbling blocks, their programming says, go out, find replacement, um, find new woman, find new man. This, this mate, this is no longer fun anymore. This mate is no good to me. And that, that whole mindset, that programming, that doesn't work well within a marriage, <laughs> you know? Um, but, uh, invariably when I talk to guys about, I caught my wife screwing around, I always ask, was there some kind of life moment right before the affair? Oh yeah. Her dad died. Well, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. I lost my job. And now suddenly we weren't, <laughs> we weren't sure if we we're going to be able to pay our mortgage. Well, that's enough to send somebody off the rails and say, let me start looking for a replacement here. Sucks, mm -hmm. but that's human nature. Um, so I hope you get to the bottom of what's going on there. Do you me feel too. in the headspace that you're in now, be honest, do you have the patience mm -hmm. to see this through if this takes years of work? Yes, I do. Um, I, I don't know if she does. I hope she does. Um, I do, you know, uh, I just, I know there's a lot of stuff that both of us were not addressing and not um, dealing with. And as I think as long as we can both uh, stay open-minded and, and deal with these issues, then there's hope. Um, now, honestly, man, I, I probably wouldn't have gotten back together with her if we didn't have two girls. Um, I know they, they say, you know, you can't, it's not going to work if you do it for the children. Well, I'm not doing it just for the children. I'm doing it for, you know, I still love her. She still loves me. For us, too, I think there's a chance. Um, and like you said, you know, kids from broken families are the ones that grow up with, you know, borderline personality disorder, narcissism, and all this stuff that have had passive aggressiveness. And I don't want my, my girls to have that. I want to do whatever I can. I don't want to have any regrets. You know what I mean? I don't want to be down the road and my kids be, yep. you know, messed up mentally. But, you know, and there's something I could have done about it to, to, to change it. I don't want to have those regrets. And part of that work and you talk about, you know, I know I'm going to do the work, but I don't know about her. Well, sexist or not, or, or if it's fair or not, a big part of your work as a man is going to be saying, woman, yes. I, told you, I told you, this is what we're doing. Yep. Are you on board or not? And you're going to have to do that probably repeatedly over the next months. Are you on uh -huh. board or not? Are you on board or not? We got this appointment on Wednesday. We were at our, during our last appointment, you didn't say anything. It was just me talking. I need you involved. That's mm -hmm. probably going to be the crux of a lot of your work. And yeah. if you're like most guys right now, I, I hear the energy in you and I hear the desire, but for a lot of guys, um, they lose that patience pretty damn quick when they see the other sides, not pulling the weight. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always surprised that, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to go through with this, you know, they're in some 
counseling meeting and the counselor says something that makes me just go, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I, I can't do this anymore. This is, this is getting ridiculous. I'm done. And it surprises everybody because he was Mr. Let's work on this relationship. So just be aware you're going to have limits. You can only get pushed so far. Yeah. Um, and, but, but it's, you got to stick to those limits. You got to stick to those boundaries and those, uh, those barriers to what you will and, and, and won't put up with and what you expect. You have every right to expect certain ac- actions out of her and inactions and a certain attitude out of her, just like she would for you. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be just a total flip flop of everything you've done up to this point, flipping on its head and do the opposite. And she's not going to just hand over the reins that quickly. She's not going to, yes, you take control. Yes. You tell us where we're going now. She's going to want to guide this ship um, pretty frequently through the process. Well, that's what she's that's what she's always done but she has been slowly giving them over good. here recently so good so where do you so what's your big goal for all this where do you see yourself i mean do you have a timeline involved here are you going to give it x number of months i have no timeline um now like you said if she's not trying after um six months you know i think six months would probably be good uh number if she's not if i don't see anything from her but but i've already seen stuff from her i've already seen her trying just the fact that she opened up to me that one night and and told me about the molestation um meant a lot to me you know a whole mm-hmm. lot so um you know she is trying she might not be trying as much as i am but yeah if i see you know six months from now her regressing or you know not mm-hmm. trying at all then then yeah but i'm gonna in between now and then there'll be conversations had where I'll be like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm not noticing anything and I'm not just going to be like, Oh, I screw it. This is it. I'm done. Um, Please keep in mind one thing, which is a very human um, behavioral trait or I don't know what the proper term is here, but it's um, something that you see again and again and again. Okay. If your wife, if your wife did in fact have some kind of inappropriate behavior, behavior with another man or woman, don't discount that. I've heard that a few times. Um, <laughs> another person, um, and then that suddenly stops or it's discovered in some cases I've heard, uh, there's a very common and very real phenomenon, which is called hysterical. I always forget it, but here is hysterical bonding, which is we've been through this traumatic event and now we're both rediscovering each other and rebonding with each other. Uh-huh. And what's common in that phase is a lot of what you described openness, man, we haven't talked like this in years. Uh, we haven't had sex like this in years. We haven't just the super closeness of, I, I think we're on the mend. I think this is great. And that can last mm-hmm. weeks. And then invariably it just drops off a cliff at that point. And it's called hysterical it's, bonding, hysterical bonding. It's very common okay. when one is discovered having an affair, some kind of traumatic event that brings you together and the brain whips up some chemicals that says, you know, bond back together again. And then when that fades, it just drops off a cliff and then, Next thing you know, she's disappeared again or she's acting funny and the phone's locked or whatever. That's when you know, well, I guess that period is over. Okay. Uh, so that's, you have to work through that. Like, okay, I know we were kind of, we had a little moment there where we were very close together. That's what I want to get back to. That's the work we're going to have to do to get back there. Mm-hmm. Um, it, a lot's going to be on you to do this. And it's completely unfair. And there's going to be a lot of men listening to this right now saying, why should he do all the freaking work? Why can't she do the work? Well, good luck with that. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Somebody's got to take the lead here. Yeah. And if you play Mr. Passive again and just say, let's see what you got and put your feet up, you're going to get one resentful woman and you're going to get zero action. Correct. The case could be made. Maybe that's to your benefit because if there's some people and I can totally see their point that say, if you put your feet up and say, let's see what you got and she does nothing, then that's the answer right there. You're done because she doesn't have the, drive in her to get it done and therefore it's not meant to be move on to the next person maybe there's something to that Uh, that's totally up to you to decide well that's what i did before and it didn't work so (laughs) or did it or does quote work mean you split and that's the best for everybody especially Uh, i don't know it's hard to say right now um what did you feel during the split did you have a feeling of freedom that was intoxicating to you? Did you like being alone in your own little apartment and dating and all uh, of that? Was that intoxicating? Uh, Did you enjoy it? Origi- originally, yes. I mean, off the bat, it was um, <laughs> it was exhilarating. Um, 
but then it it got old it fast for me it was uh just not being around my girls man uh, really not much to do with her my wife but my daughters i mean it it just it started eating at me and started tearing me apart because i only saw them on my days off so i got them two days a week and um it was very 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 hard uh for me personally and um I, i'm sure there's some deep-seated stuff that goes into that too from my childhood i don't know but it was it was very hard for me to be away from them and um you know i tried to work as much as i could so i didn't have to think about it uh you know i put in extra hours just because i hated going home to that apartment and just being alone you know no dog no girls n- nothing just myself and my thoughts and it was it was hard and know? i had to bring up some thoughts of my dad wasn't around when i was a kid and, and here oh, i yeah. go i'm doing the same damn thing oh yeah it's kind of scary how uh, we can't seem to run from our past and we we just seem to uh do all we can to recreate it even when it's not our fault and the wife does this and that and you find yourself like damn it i'm doing the same damn thing my dad did my grandpa did and Mm -hmm. it's just this programming that's in us and we have to work really hard to overcome it Um, yes same as like if you come from a long line of alcoholics and you're just drinking excessively like no i have a problem just like my dad and my dad's dad and my dad's dad's dad (laughs) and uh, you realize you gotta put the bottle down you can't can't handle it yeah so all right well how do you want to end this what's uh any any extra thoughts any questions um no, I just, you know, like I said, right now, at this point, I'm getting all the help I can get from every outlet aspect I can get it from and mm-hmm. uh, to try and to try and better myself, better our relationship. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I'm finding out, you know, just through all the readings and I'm not going off of just one reading. I'm doing multiple sources. Yeah. So and, and trying to get my information and, and um, I'm just excited to go to counseling and, and have a mediator, you know, have somebody else you know, individual counseling and couples counseling, uh, therapy, just, uh, to, to try and get another out, uh, outlook on it. Somebody's, you know, cause the family, nobody knows about our marriage. Only we know about what's really going on. So it'll be nice to have that counselor to, well, you know, now, and I guess whoever listened to this, but nice to have that counselor that, uh, uh, will be able to help us as well and, and guide us and say, Oh no, Russell, you're, you're not in the right here. You're in the wrong, you know, you're not thinking right here. I don't think you have this problem. I think you have this problem, just a, a second opinion. And, um, so I'm just trying to move forward, man. And, uh, do what's best for me, for me, uh, for her, for, for our mm-hmm. children and our family. Uh, thinking of what you can do, like leaving you with some kind of little homework. You, you keep mentioning the term passive aggressive. Yes. Can, can you give examples of your passive aggressiveness and in, in this relationship? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I'm trying to change it now that I've, I've, I've realized that I might have it. Um, but before, you know, I just, I never would fight. I, I mean, we'd fight, but I'd never like, you know, do you want to do this? I don't care. You know, do you want to do this? Yeah, that's fine. Or what do you, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, that was always my answer. Um, I would just always, I didn't want any conflict. I didn't want, uh, arguments, you know, but in, inevitably it always ended it up there. But, um, uh, cause I think, you know, like you said, she would get frustrated with my passiveness, but, um, I think, you know, she wanted me to stand up and, and, uh, act like a man. And, you know, my thing is I never had anybody show me how to be a man, but now I'm trying to do that on my own. And, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, where would the- that's where I'm at. Where's the aggressive component in that? I hear the passive, yeah, fine, whatever. But would you get upset when things didn't go quite how you thought they would end up? Um, well, the aggressive was, you know, like I said, we'd fight every day. Um, we'd, uh, so the passiveness was always, you know, trying not to fight, trying yeah. not to. Avoiding conflict. Yeah. yeah, correct. And, um, you know, just trying to go with the flow and just keep her happy and, and keep her, you know, from getting upset and then but inevitably uh it would always turn into a a fight and you know i i would always we would character assassinate each other i'd always uh um just i'd have to walk away i'd always walk away and she'd come after me and but um like i said i just started reading into this so i'm not you know i'm not an expert on it i don't know i just saw a lot of the things i was reading in the uh passive aggressive disorder um 
like cues or whatever the signs uh i i have and like i said i didn't take any notes or have anything ready for this meeting but um i i, I showed a lot of the signs of having it there's the disorder so did you uh did you read dr glover's book no more mr nice guy no but i have i have that written down i think I think that will be your big aha moment for you. Okay. Um, when you're talking about passive aggressiveness, you're in what Dr. Glover call, Dr. Glover calls uh, nice, nice guy, guy nice guy syndrome. Yep. Uh, I don't want to be passive. Uh, I'm going to. There's a concept which that was one of my big aha moments as a guy going through what I did was what he called covert contracts, which is I'm not going to tell you people that I'm involved with what I expect out of you. I'm going to keep that to myself. But when you don't do what I expect out of you, I'm going to get very upset. So the other person can't win. So when the woman says something effective, I'm going out with my friends for the fourth weekend in a row. And in, in, your, in your gut, you're thinking, no, that's not right. Why are you leaving me with the kids four weekends in a row? Oh, that's not fair. But you don't want to cause a scene. You don't want to cause any commotion. So you're just like, okay, that's fine. And then when she mm -hmm. goes out and has fun and comes home drunk, you really let her have it. And you're really angry. And then she says, well, if you were so upset about me going, why didn't you tell me you didn't want me to go? And you say, yeah. well, I, and then the guy says, well, I shouldn't have to. That's, that's a covert contract. You know, I expect, I expected her at that point to say, okay, I'll stay home. I love you. I'll be with the kids, but she didn't. Therefore I'm upset. So, you know, it's one of well, those. Yeah, me, me not speaking up for myself is, is a big reason I think I have it because like when she, you know, kind of, made me move in with her and, you know, had us move to Georgia and then had, uh, you know, kind of forced me into getting married. Like all those things, like I never spoke up for myself. I should have yeah. spoke up and said, no, no, I'm not ready. I don't think this is right yet. Um, but instead I just, my passive aggressiveness, I said, okay, all right, fine. And, and now I have these resentments for not speaking up about it. Um, so there's, there's a big, uh, I, you know, um, example of why I think I might have it. Yeah. I, I think reading that book will be a big, big help to you. And there's exercises you can do in it. I've had an interview with Dr. Glover and I've had him on the DSO fraternity on a, on a live group call. And um, he's really great, very good writer and even better one-on-one -on -one, uh, talking to him. So highly recommend his book. I'll make that my next book. So, I mean, it sounds like you're on the right path here. You got the right frame of mind. Um, just be prepared, you know, in the old stoic philosophy, but be prepared for the worst. Oh yeah. In your mind, what, what could happen and how you were going to uh, react to it. But you've already done the hard work, which is you've already done the whole attorney writing the agreement, divorce thing. And mm -hmm. uh, a, lo a lot of guys, that's a huge stumbling block for them. They won't even go to there because then that makes it more real, the separation and they don't want to approach that if they don't have to, but um, well, it, it it wasn't my choice, and it it was uh, it was true. it was very hard, very very hard. But uh, I think if we had two more days later, if we'd gotten to the temporary hearing, um, it'd be over because yeah. all that shit all that shit would have come out in the open. And uh, but luckily, um, it didn't get to the temporary hearing. It was a couple of days before when she changed her mind. So I think there's still hope. <laughs> but do you have a um, do you have a session planned? A counseling session we, planned for the two of you? Yes. Yep, we have a couples uh, session in about a week and then individual um, sessions uh, a few days after that, each each one of us. So, Have you had a one-on-one -on -one sit down with her where the theme is, all right, this is what I expect from here on out. If you want to be my wife, this is what's going to happen. Yes, not yet. Um, but there have been little things said here and there. So... Uh, there have been things said, but not uh, an official like sit down. Um, I, think, I think this is sit down time. I think uh, yeah. right before right before the big meeting with the third party, just get it all out in the open. So there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hide behind, you know, a third party, the counselor and everything. You can, you know, pat the couch, couch next to you and say, you know, come over here, honey, sit down. We need to talk. And so you're, you're, you're talking about like me telling yes. her, you know, no more, no more, uh, uh, password on your phone that I don't know. We need to be completely open, stuff like that, right? right. Whatever those things may be that are bugging you in your gut uh -huh. and, you, and you don't feel they've been really resolved, there's got to be something. Okay. Past, whatever. Okay. Those things need to come out. And before we go to this meeting with this counselor, here's what I expect out of it. 
this is the attitude I'm going in with it. What do you think? Okay. Um, you may get some unsatisfactory surprises of, I don't know. I'm just going cause you want to go. I, I don't, I don't know what you, whatever is fine with me. And that's where you're like, no, that's not the attitude I'm looking for. I'm looking mm-hmm. for some gung ho. Yay. Raw. Let's do this. If you're not gung ho. Yay. Raw. Let's do this. Then let's not do it. We're just wasting everybody's time. If you're just going, cause I want to go and it's just, why bother? Yeah. You know, I like that. That, that sounds sets, good. That sets the tone. Like I'm serious mm-hmm. here. Uh, I'm serious about this and I'm not willing to sacrifice who I am and my happiness just to be, be passive guy again and go through all these steps. No, no, this, we're going to do this right. And that's what this, mm-hmm. somebody's got to take the reins here. And obviously you don't want to take the reins when it comes to this, which is funny because you've taken the reins over every other aspect of a relationship, but you're being very passive here. So that's kind of telling Mrs. Mm-hmm. Wife. So that's not a good thing, but so this is what we're going to do. And the only thing she can do is jump on board. That's the whole theme. Yeah. I'm going, you're going to jump on board or not. That's, that's the whole theme of this going forward. And yes. you may jump off a few times and it's totally up to you and your patience level and your le- level of work ethic to br- jump up, bring her back on and then continue down the road. Or do you just say, all right, fine, stay off. I'm, I'm going to continue on in my journey. Yeah. And like, like I said, if the two girls weren't involved, that probably I would have told her to kick rocks a long time ago, probably, but I hear you. Um, it's it's very <laughs> children complicated very, thing, don't they yeah 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 so there's there's definitely still hope though and uh um yeah that'll be the next thing i do is is get mr nice no more mr nice guy and read that and sit down sit down with her and uh set down some expectations and, and have you uh, checked out the uh fraternity group oh yeah i'm in it oh you are okay good very good yeah. excellent all right yeah all right. i uh well we have get, a check I check Facebook all the time and, and read the funny stories and encouraging stories and all that stuff. I've even, I think, put a couple things on there. And so, are you on the uh, live calls at all? I don't know what that is. Oh, no, you had live, live calls. I thought you said life, L- <laughs> L-I-F-E, live calls. Uh, no, I have not checked out any of those. Right. Well, be sure and check those out. You can hear from other got, guys. A lot of guys have been you in got, your position, so. You got one tomorrow at 3.30, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try and check it out if I got time. Cool. Well, hope to see you there. All right, sir. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Sounds like you've got a lot of work ahead of you. Keep in touch. Let me know how it goes. If you want to chat again, I'm, I'm here for you. But, uh, all right, man. I really appreciate it. Sounds like you've got a, a fun road ahead of you, so I wish you all the best. Well, thank you so much. I've uh, definitely gotten a little bit from this, and I really appreciate it. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.